from the Atlantic shore of North America, a jetliner climbs east for Europe, one of an international fleet that airlifts thousands across this ocean every day in seven hours. More and more of these travelers are Europeans, visitors making a first two-way trip, and now homeward bound from their own discovery of the new world. The first introduction to North America was through one of its great air terminal cities. It may have been Washington DC or Boston, electronics and education, science and technology in Patrician New England. Others landed at Toronto, Canada's fastest growing city. Or at its still bigger rival Montreal where both French and English are spoken. Some took in Miami built by holidays for holidays. And nearly everyone went to New York, the most cosmopolitan city of them all. From these six eastern cities, our travelers spread out into a continent four times the size of Europe, from the Arctic almost to the tropics. Now they're coming home, each with a different viewpoint and a different story to tell. Already, they're exchanging personal impressions of Canada, private views of America. Memory is reinforced by tangible evidence for the stay-at-homes. Sealskin boots and a Hudson Bay blanket are already on parade. Thousands of photographs were taken along the way. And one recent visitor, an English music teacher, did her exploring with a tape machine, recording as she went. She can't play her tapes in the aircraft, but once home, she will recall her own very special memories of North America. On the very end of Manhattan, I found a lunch hour concert given by the Ralph Hollander Quartet. A moment of chamber music in this continent of a thousand symphony orchestras. Each summer there are hundreds of music festivals, most of them outdoors. Deep down indoors, another music, essentially American, played and phrased each night in countless different ways. who believe that this is the beginning of all jazz, is an authority on American music of the past hundred years. A great instrumentalist and a famous entertainer, Bob Dash. Carolina is a singing and dancing state. These youngsters were rehearsing for Asheville's Mountain Folk Festival. With them, a ballad singer and a song that left Europe generations ago to find a new home in these great smoky mountains. Twas in the merry month of May And the green buds were Barbara Allen, he sent his servant to her town. He sent him to... 
the most exciting sound we heard was the roar of Niagara. We came to Canada from France for our honeymoon, so of course we couldn't miss this wonderful panorama. Later we took a dramatic trip in the famous Maid of the Mists, the ship that brings you up to the waterfalls themselves. The Great Lakes are half in the United States and half in Canada, and the waters of Niagara flow on into Lake Ontario. On the north side, we stayed in Canada's fastest growing city, Toronto. Although it's 1,500 miles from the Atlantic, Toronto is an international port with big ocean ships that come from as far away as Germany, or sometimes even Japan. On their way to and from the Atlantic, these ships are lifted and lowered by the many locks of the St. Lawrence Seaway. Canals were used early on for commerce in Canada. The pioneers named this one La Chine, China, because they thought it might lead them there. They brought their furs along it in ten-man canoes, much like this one, now used for racing by the local canoe club. They are going past an old Hudson Bay trading post, now almost forgotten in the suburbs of Canada's first city, Montreal, Montreal. An old city where a baroque church and a gleaming hotel share the same main street. A bilingual city where your speed or vitesse may be slow or long. And you may equally well read La Presse or the Montreal Star or perhaps subscribe to the Populaire and to the Montreola. Arrête or stop, but the language of the oldest buildings is French. Belfries that could be in Brittany. Here's a chateau like hundreds in the Ile de France. And most French of all, Quebec City, where the fleur de lis of once royal France has become the province flag. It flies here where the Chateau Frontenac once commanded the St. Lawrence River, where it meets the Atlantic. Quebec is one of the oldest communities in North America, and the nearest to Europe of Canada's great cities. Away from the cities, we found the land of rivers, lakes and forests, with many hunting camps and weekend homes that are cheap to rent. Canadian families, like our friends at Lake we met, hire little seaplanes that cost no more a mile than a city taxi. 